welcome to the channel. Cindy and I are working on another little tag team project. There is an art gallery in our town over in Dartmouth called the Dart Gallery. And the lady who owns the Dart Gallery, whose name is Jane, had a bunny named Boris. And Boris recently passed away and that made us really sad. Cindy has a bunny named Stuart. So we wanted to do a little tribute to our friend Boris the bunny. So I've transferred my sketch over onto an illustration board. I'm gonna paint the background and then we're gonna paint a bunny. Let's decide. I think we're gonna use some shades of blue in the background for him because he's gonna be a little brown bunny. So I think the blue would make it pop. We're gonna do a bit of a fur, fur texture using this blue. of this palette. It's a good time. And we're just going to layer a couple of different blues on top of each other. I think I've got a nice dark Antwerp blue that I'll just drop in here to give it a little depth. Then we're going to use my favorite tool. Good old salt shaker. That's going to give us a bit of a fun background texture. And I'm gonna let this dry. We're gonna come back to this and finish the background after. All right, enough of our bunny background is dry that we can add in our next color, which I think we're gonna use this nice deep turquoise. Now turquoise is a color that I've struggled to find an acceptable version of in, uh, in just a regular palette. Same thing with the purples. I don't find that they're the most vibrant. There might be some palettes that are the exception to the rule, but my Sakura palette, the purples are okay. The turquoise is okay, but I find it much more vibrant when it comes out of the two. The Winsor & Newton ones, or the Holbein watercolors, are the ones that I tend to use because I find them very, very bright. Once you get to know me, you'll know that I like my colors bright. A shadow underneath him too just for make it look like he's sitting on something so he's not just hovering in the air we're back to do our second pass of the background for boris the bunny i brushed off the excess salt which if you find you put too much salt you can kind of rub it off with your finger i usually do it over the garbage can if it's a little bit stuck on. I find those little plastic things that you use to hold shut like a loaf of bread are a great the tool to kind of scrape off what's in the background that you don't want anymore. I want a nice juicy brush. These brushes are very old. I've probably had these about 20 years. I believe they're squirrel hair, something like that. They were expensive, but as you can see, sometimes an expensive brush is worth it. These are some of my favorite brushes because they're, they're juicy get a lot of water on them so they're great for this. used to use them for acrylics but I don't really paint acrylics much anymore. It's not really my thing. I vastly prefer watercolor. I feel like watercolor is a little more unpredictable. It does what it wants and you're just kind of along for the ride. You can control it to an extent but a lot of the time it's like nah I do what I want. Sometimes if you go back and put more, it'll add a little bit more texture, but in the second layer. All right, we're gonna let that go dry for a bit. And we're gonna come back, paint a bunny. Come back with a little bit more of Boris the bunny. So, we're going to wet down the whole bun, and then we're gonna drop in our colors. So this bunny is kind of a, it's got a little bit of sandy brown fur, a touch of gray here and there, so we're gonna Gonna work with that.
I tend to paint in the evening and I ink in the morning, so I'm having my cup of coffee right now while I'm working on this. going to add a little bit of gold to the background just for the heck of it. First I'm going to put a little bit more dark in a couple more spots so I want it to be darker. Did somebody say frame? I think I can help you out there. But first things first, let's remove these people so they're not staring at me while we do it. You can see I already have a design prepped after some back and forth with Sarah. I'm gonna alter it a little bit, but essentially all I have to do now is transfer it onto the frame. And then to finish it off, I'm going to do it by using wood burning alongside watercolor pencils. So I'm using my wood burning tool with a mini flow point to do the outline. And then after that's done, I'll be coloring it in using watercolored pencils and rubbing alcohol. Once everything was finished and dry, I gave it a clear coat with some Mod Podge iridescent spray. Back to you, Sarah. Let's finish this up. Thank you, Cindy, for wood burning this frame for us. So I'm going to, I think, finish this up with a little bit of gold acrylic ink and maybe a little bit of a gloss finish just for fun. So what I'm using right now, this is, is acrylic ink. about using a more watery either acrylic paint or acrylic ink is that you can work it into the wood grain. I'll often finish the edges of canvas with stuff like this too, whether it's a gold acrylic ink or a gold, gold paint. You want a high quality one because the cheaper ones don't actually look like gold. They just kind of look like gold colored sparkle or um, kind of dingy, like a dusty gold as opposed to a nice pigment that looks like you got some fancy gold leaf to do. over there. That's okay. I'm gonna fix that. Eh. Can't tell. It looks on purpose. Fits in with the shimmer. Sometimes you make mistakes, you just work the mistake into whatever it is that you were doing. 
I had a teacher, professor in college used to always say, you can drink coffee while you're doing artwork because you can work a coffee stain into a piece of artwork. Don't eat a greasy donut over your artwork. It's really, really hard to work in a grease stain. <coughs> I've worked a lot of coffee and tea and even whiskey stains into artwork every now and again. something in there. And there we go. He's all done. The power of teamwork is such a wonderful thing. Thank you all for watching and we'll see you in the next video.